When I first got my dog, I was so worried that I didn't have everything that I would need. Turns out I did all right. So today we are gonna to be talking about the five dog essentials that you need, that you just need to have. It's gonna make your life so much easier. Now I will say this is gonna exclude your basics like a towel to clean off their feet or a collar or a dog tag or a leash. Your basics aren't gonna be in here. If you don't have those yet, um, well, do you, do you have the dog? Are you sure you have a dog? <laughs> but before we get into the list, as usual, I have a crazy dog beside me, as usual. We gotta go to the park. jump in to number one, which are brushes. Now there are different brushes for different breeds and different types of hair and everything. If you have an Aussie, do not own this. You're probably wondering, why the heck do I have this? This is called a Furminator. This is a beast of a hairbrush. It's mainly to get to that second layer and just dig deep and pull out all of that fur. This is a beast. I still use it on my dog. I do it very, very lightly, just scraping the top and I barely use any pressure. You're not supposed to use this on an Aussie because you don't want to mess up their double coat, but I just use it lightly. It works for me. Then there's these two and they're both quite fine combs. This is more like a normal hairbrush. This is something that's going to take out all of those mats that you tend to see. A tip when using these, don't do long, hard strokes. Don't go down your dog's back and if you clearly feel that there's gonna be a mat there, don't just keep pulling on it. Do short little sections, make it an enjoyable process. Don't just do all of the hard parts at once. You're scratching them anyway, so why not make this like a scratch and they might enjoy it. So brush your dog or pay over $100 for grooming because your dog takes so long to groom. Why do that? Just buy a $5 brush. Today we are at Bruce Pitt Dog Park and it is disgustingly humid out. It says it's only 26 degrees Celsius, but it feels like it's 40 and it tastes like a body odor. <laughs> but most importantly, Frankie is happy nonetheless and we're out. On these days we only go for a little bit and that's when these essentials that I'm going to talk about really come in handy, especially one of them. But this is our daily routine at the least. We always make sure to go to a dog park to get some socialization in, especially with COVID and not seeing a lot of people and not doing our normal dog meetups with friends and everything like that. We always got to get out. Number two, we have yet to use this, which is very rare because we are always in the bush. I haven't even opened this yet, so I'll be opening this for the first time. It comes with two of these. These right here. This is called a tick remover. There's instructions on the package. There's also instructions on YouTube. There's instructions absolutely everywhere. This is a tool that every single person should have. Whether you go into the woods or you're just in your backyard, there's so many times where there's ticks everywhere. I don't know why I don't find them on my dog. It kind of makes me a little nervous that Frankie's running around in the woods and he comes out without them on them, but he doesn't have any. You place it in, you twist, and it comes out. Do not just place it in and pull because that may leave part of the tick still inside your dog and then all of the bad crap is gonna stay inside your dog. And if you're ever worried about it or if you have your first tick and you have to remove it and you're really spooked to see if you did it right, you can always bring your dog to the vet. Vets have seen it a million times and just to put your mind at ease, ticks are a lot worse to humans than they are to dogs. Dogs can usually survive with them. Humans, we get Lyme disease. And I believe, I'm not an expert here, I believe we only get Lyme disease from red ticks, which are known as deer ticks. So the little black ones are usually harmless, but still be cautious. When your dog comes in from the forest, it can end up in your bed if you sleep with your dog in the bed. What I recommend doing is taking this fine comb brush, and every time you go to the park or go somewhere, you can just brush your dog outside your car, and then you're good to go. Now let's go on to number three. This is a dog harness. This is something that I think every single person should have for their dog, not for them. I mean, if you need one, there's kids ones. Listen, I get it and I hear you loud and clear. Why do you need a dog harness if you're going to just the dog park? 
Where is my dog? Oh, he's peeing. <laughs> I completely understand that thought process, but here's mine. I always have a harness on my dog because you never know when you're gonna be in a sticky situation. And I don't wanna have to think like that, but I think it's better that I do. If there's ever a dog fight, or if there's ever a puddle that he doesn't think is deep, but then it's too deep, so I have to reach down and grab him out. I don't wanna be pulling him by his fur. I can grab the handle on the back of the harness and yank up and it's not gonna hurt him. I know that collars are better for training walking, but when we're going out, I don't wanna to have to fuss around to leash on to his collar and the amount of times that I've missed the collar and clicked onto his hair or something weird, and then next thing you know, my dog is loose. I'd rather just have something firm, have something stable, and something reliable, and that's what this harness does. This is one from RC Pets. I'll leave it down below if you wanna go check it out. It's amazing, I've gone through all of them. Uh, I've bought four of them now, for people and for Frankie, I had to go all through all three sizes because he was puppy, adult, and then got bigger. But it has a clip in the front and a clip in the back and it goes on super easy. You just slide it over their head and then clip it on the sides. And it's a lot easier than trying to put an arm in and do some friggin' circus show. And I specifically like the ones with a clip in the front and a clip at the back so you have different guiding options and uh, whatever suits your needs and whatever your dog might need. When Frankie's being a little bit of an asshole, I clip it on the front. It gives me a little bit more direction. <laughs> I don't know if you can see him. He's just standing in the doorway, just breathing. It's annoying. Next up is an essential and there's many different ways to go about this. So this is kind of just the topic in a whole and it's car safety. Specifically for us, we use a car seatbelt. This one is from Kurgo and it was like 15 bucks. It simply clicks into the seatbelt and then clips onto the back of the harness. I get a lot of comments being like, oh, okay, why don't you put them in a cage? Cage is way, way, way safer. Uh, I own a Jeep. And if you know anything about the Jeeps, the frames are very strong, but the roofs are removable. So if that roof gets hit, which is where the crate would be because the whole roof in the back can come off. You don't need to know this. <laughs> Basically that can collapse, which can penetrate the crate and the crate can get smushed. And if you've ever had a bent crate, you can't open the door. And so my worry is that you get in a car accident and you can't open the crate. Next thing you know, I'm fidgeting with a crate with a crashed up car trying to save my dog. This is something when I have my worst little nightmares of getting in a car crash with my dog, this is the one thing that I see that's saving his life and, and it's easy and it's manageable. I always keep a knife in the car as well. If there's anything that's gonna happen, I can easily cut this, but at the same time, this is not something that's gonna break and I can clip it onto the harness so that way, if we do get in a car crash, I can unclip from the harness, I can unclip from the seatbelt, or I can take the harness off completely. But there's so many horror stories, like even just like sitting with your dog and you're coming to like a gentle stop, but then it becomes abrupt and then your dog goes flying through the windshield just because they don't have a seatbelt on it, 15 bucks can save their life. And lastly, the water bottle. I have been looking for this water bottle for a very, very long time. And this is the one that works. It has a screw on lid and it's very simple. I just put the water in and there's an open closed valve and you can squeeze the water to come all the way up. And then at the same time, you can keep the bottle open and then unsqueeze and the water will go back into the bottle. So fans from the channel will know that this product right here, I have been searching for for quite some time. This is a water bottle that's small enough to fit on the leash and also suck the water back in so you're not wasting it, which is nice. I think this is something that's super essential. When I first got a dog, I didn't really think about it, but now that I have one, it's crazy how much they actually need to drink water, especially when they're out, even if they choke on that water. But this bottle is super nice. It doesn't carry a, a large amount of water, so I only take it to the dog park. I clip it on the leash here. It's not really meant to do that, it just works. I'm saying a water bottle in general, water as a source that your dog needs is important to bring with you when traveling or adventuring or going on hikes and little stuff like that. I'll leave this link down below. It's on Amazon and we use it all the time. But I guess not me, I don't drink out of it, he does. And I think that's about it. All of these are essentials in my life of having a dog. And if I don't use it daily, then I definitely use it weekly. I may not brush my dog every single day because I have life. And before I was so stupid about water, I didn't even bring water for myself and now, Hydration is super important for your dog and yourself. I hope there was maybe one thing from watching today's video that was like, oh, wait a second. That's the thing that's gonna solve all my problems. I hope it was here and I hope it's what you were looking for. But thank you guys very much for watching.
So I didn't want to say this because I didn't want to be lame. I didn't want to have this on my list. Are you well? It's so essential to get a lint roller. If you have an Aussie or a dog that sheds at all, you need to get, get them to stay still and lint roll them. <laughs> or yourself, but you get the point. So, so key. I'm not even joking. I've honestly just accepted the fact that I am part my dog. Uh, I consume enough of his hair, so I might as well look like him too.